Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. alaikum. Welcome to Newsroom. I'm your host, Rima Khalid Bhatt. Today is the 19th of October, 2023, and these are the stories that we'll be highlighting during the course of the show. We'll begin, ladies and gentlemen, with Prime Minister Anwar al Kakar Saab's visit to China. Today was a very important meeting where he met with Chinese President Xi Jinping. Important uh, aspects of cooperation were discussed during the course of the meeting, and of course, the resolve to further strengthen ties between the two sides was also part of the agenda. Xi Jinping was not the only Chinese leader that our Prime Minister has met uh, during the course of his visit to Beijing to attend the third Belt and Road Forum. He has also met with his counterpart Li Qiang and has also met with other Chinese leaders and uh, the Chinese heads of uh, important companies that are present there, of course, to attract Chinese investment in Pakistan. We'll be highlighting Pakistan-China cooperation, the CPEC, BRI, the meeting with uh, President Xi Jinping, the importance of this in the current geopolitical and geostrategic context in our first story. Our second story, ladies and gentlemen, concerns the situation as far as Palestine is concerned. The number of casualties when it comes to Gaza has surpassed 3,000. At the same time, the number of casualties in the West Bank is also increasing. There is uh, There are statements that are coming from the world over. There are protests that are happening. The Spanish uh, Minister for Social Rights has also asked the Spanish government to suspend ties with the Israeli government on these so-called barbarities towards the Palestinians. Will that happen or not? Only time will tell. Uh, the British uh, the leader is, of course, in Israel as we speak. This follows the visit by Joe Biden uh, to Israel as well. Will that uh, uh, show a certain polarity as far as the point of view of the West towards uh, uh, this crisis in Palestine is concerned. At the same time, a special uh, extraordinary meeting of the OIC was also held uh, recently in which uh, Mr. Jalil Abbas Jilani, our foreign minister, attended. And uh, important uh, matters were discussed regarding the Palestinian situation as well uh, in this. Our president, uh, Dr. Arif Falvi, also went to the Palestinian embassy in Pakistan and also met with the Palestinian ambassador to show his resolve with uh, the Palestinians and saying that he stood with the, uh, his Palestinian brethren. Pakistan is also sending aid to uh, Palestine as we speak. This humanitarian aid is being sent in different forms. The fact remains also that uh, the aid is being stopped at the borders uh, in uh, of, of Gaza. And the fact also remains that other countries who want to send aid uh, cannot uh, have that aid reach the Palestinian people. We all remember the uh, the hospital that was bombarded by Israel, as a result of which more than 500 people have also lost their lives. A lot is happening. The fact remains that uh, more needs to be done and nothing concrete is being done as far as action from the important powers that be is concerned. This is going to be our second story, ladies and gentlemen. Then we are going to talk about the International Day Against uh, Breast Cancer that is being observed today. You can see this a uh, pink uh, ribbon that I'm wearing and all our PTV World anchors are also wearing uh, since the beginning of the month of October because October is best uh, Breast Cancer Awareness Month. We also need to highlight the importance of uh, awareness for breast cancer and the need to get yourself diagnosed uh, on a regular basis so that you can know if and when, uh, I hope not, but if and when you do get some symptoms that could lead to breast cancer. So breast cancer awareness is extremely important this month. We highlight this during the entire month. Then we are going to talk about, ladies and gentlemen, uh, an earthquake that has happened of all places on the planet Mars. And this has astounded a lot of scientists in NASA they, who say that they have not seen uh, such an earthquake in uh, on another planet. In fact, this uh, 4.7 magnitude earthquake did happen. And it was, the, as per the scientists, a meteorite's impact that caused uh, uh, this uh, quake. Uh, this uh, was, uh, of course, of a magnitude of 1,319 Mars quakes. Various space agencies are now monitoring the Martian surface to see how Mars is going to react after this earthquake. This is going to be our last story. Let's begin with our first, and that concerns the visit of our caretaker Prime Minister Anwar al Kakar to China. He met uh, with the Chinese President Xi Jinping today. Many important things, uh, and of course, the bilateral ties between both the countries were discussed during the meeting. This was an important meeting because of the two leaders getting together and uh, you know, highlighting the brotherhood and the relations that both the leaders uh, and the, both the countries enjoy. We've been joined by two uh, guests to uh, discuss different aspects of Park China relations, the Belt and Road uh, Initiative, the Belt and Road Forum, as well as China Pakistan Economic Corridor. In the studios, we've been joined by Naveed Aman Khan, he's a senior analyst, and online, we'll be joined by Dr. Mahmoud Hassan Khan, he's an expert in regional 
affairs. Uh, I welcome the both of you uh, to this show. Let's begin with Naveed Aman Khan. Naveed, uh, how do you uh, see the meeting of uh, our caretaker Prime Minister Nawaz Kakar with Xi Jinping? How important is this in the current context of so many happenings that are going on in the region, in the Middle East, uh, and uh, that you know are changing the whole strategic or geopolitical scenario of the region? Definitely, Khalid. Uh, this is very important for Pakistan. And it's a very good opportunity for Pakistan to interact with Chinese uh, uh, authorities regarding uh, economic activities uh, 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 occurring in the region, um, in particular uh, regarding CPEC. Uh, China is very much concerned about CPEC. And because China believes in development, in progress, in connectivity, and uh, in uh, prosperity, China, China's VN is very, uh, very clear. Uh, as far as the economic development of the country or even the region is concerned. Mm. Uh, that is why China in wants to involve Pakistan as much as possible in the economic activity. Mm. Not only Pakistan, but also they have decided to include Afghanistan in uh, CPEC, uh, uh, all this uh, you know, e economic activity. Uh, China's uh, model of economic uh, development is uh, very, very uh, you know, visionary. And the whole of the world is following that model. Pakistan also need to follow that model in a uh, in a rapid pace. So it is very important at this stage. Uh, the Pakistani Prime Minister Anwar al has uh, visited uh, China and uh, negotiated uh, many um, uh, uh, issues or matters, uh, uh, economic matters, so with the Chinese authorities. Uh, China, he has met uh, with the Chinese Prime Minister or the President as well and uh, have assured uh, his cooperation, the cooperation of Pakistan as a state of Pakistan that China, Pakistan will always uh, stand with the policies uh, of China regarding CPEC. All right. Mahmoud Hassan Khan Saab, I'd like to understand the, your perspective on two things. The first is uh, uh, a, a statement by Xi Jinping while he met with Anwar al Kakar Saab. He said uh, peace, stability and prosperity is amongst our priorities. The second concerns our Prime Minister's comment that he was impressed with the vision of President Xi Jinping. How important is this vision of President Xi Jinping that envisions peace, stability and prosperity among its priorities in the whole context that we are seeing the changes that are happening every day. We see new uh, conflicts, uh, small and big, emerging. Yeah, first of all, uh, thank you very much for inviting me. Uh, uh, it is a very important question, uh, the very timely uh, question to uh, to be answered. Uh, the two-day meeting between the uh, Prime Minister of Pakistan, Anwarul Kakar, and Xi Jinping, Chinese Prime President, uh, uh, vividly reflects uh, the in-depth uh, 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 friendship, rather strategic friendship uh, between Pakistan and China, uh, which has been uh, dubbed or termed as uh, ironclad uh, friendship. Uh, uh, which has you know, become uh, to reach to its climax uh, in, t in shape of uh, CPEG, which is the flagship uh, ship, uh, uh, project of BRI, uh, uh, narrating or highlighting the three uh, important uh, X factor of uh, socio-economic prosperity, regional peace and stability, that is peace, prosperity and stability, not in, in this region, but uh, beyond this region. As you know, that uh, uh, the world is uh, confronting uh, with the ongoing uh, Russia and uh, Ukraine conflict, uh, which has already been uh, um, increased its intensity in terms of uh, energy and food insecurity because of the, the ongoing conflict between Israel and Hamas in, in Middle East, uh, which has uh, many serious uh, socio-economic, geopolitical, and geostrategic replications, uh, uh, not for the Middle East, but uh, even for Southeast Asia. So that's why the meeting of, uh, of uh, uh, between two leaders uh, in Beijing today, um, uh, precisely highlights the strategic orientation of our foreign pol policy, which has been uh, tilted uh, towards the west, uh, uh, towards east, that is China. China friendship is the grand drawer of uh, our socio-economic prosperity in shape of uh, CPEG, which has already achieved uh, or, or, or reached to its uh, first decade, and the second uh, CPEG phase two has already been started. Uh, therefore, 
lot of uh, uh, meaningful uh, uh, and far reaching uh, 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 mous have already been signed uh, during the uh, th this meeting uh, which uh, uh, covers all aspects of socio economic prosperity industrial development uh, 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 issues pertaining to urban sustainable development climate change uh, vaccine development uh, rather the health uh, cooperation uh, 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 green energy and uh, uh, and last but not least ml1 which is the the real outcome or dividend of uh, 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 prime minister of pakistan visit to uh, uh, china uh, 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 during the bri BRI third forum uh, uh, in Beijing. Peace, prosperity, stability are the three main essential factors of uh, uh, of uh, microeconomic uh, stability, sustainability, and political uh, 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 political maturity. So that's why you rightly said that uh, the vision of um, Xi Jinping. Uh, highlights the importance of uh, sustainable international cooperation economic globalization uh, uh, global south uh, uh, consolidations uh, and uh, and uh, i would like to um, uh, add that uh, during his uh, keynote speech uh, during the uh, BRI F uh, to the uh, 23rd uh, 23 the xi jinping has also announced a very uh, uh, important strategic uh, initiative in the shape of uh, the global initiative uh, of uh, artificial intelligence. So that's why his uh, whole speech was uh, emphasized on the digitalization, e-commerce, uh, qualitative industrialization, which Pakistan uh, is also badly needed to to institutionalize uh, in its economy, its in, in industries, so that the emerging socio-economic, geopolitical, or geostrategic uh, spillover replication may be mitigated with the help and with the close liaison uh, and political consultation with China. Thank you. All right, Mr. Khazan Khan, there was a very concise, you know, detailed answer on uh, what the shared perspective uh, of uh, China is and how important is regional connectivity as far as China is. And of course, Pakistan supports this vision of regional connectivity as far as China is concerned. Naveed Aman Khan, when it comes to Pakistan, it has also said it is going to support uh, China's One China policy. How important is that? And what is the One China policy? One China policy is very important for China and for Pakistan as well. Because uh, if uh, we talk about Taiwan, uh, um, America supports Taiwan against China mm. and uh, wants to create problem for China in China. And uh, uh, this policy, Pakistan doesn't uh, support mm. in, at any level or uh, politically or economically or uh, diplomatically. We have ties with China. We believe that uh, China, one China policy is the strength of China and, and the region as well. And uh, as far as uh, this uh, 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 today's meeting is concerned. Um, many MOUs are uh, uh, have discussed, already been signed. Yes. Uh, mm. signed, and two are very important. All all are very important, mm -hmm. but we we will d discuss two in particular. One is uh, uh, their uh, investment on uh, solar energy, which is an alternative uh, way of uh, finding energy in Pakistan because Pakistan has been suffering from energy issues, and uh, you know. Uh, for, for the long, for mm. for many years, yes. and uh, it is uh, uh, one way of uh, having alternative energy uh, arrangement in Pakistan to meet the energy deficit. Mm. Number two is uh, the long-standing issue of uh, uh, railway, the upgradation of uh, 1733 kilometers long railway from Karachi to Peshawar uh, will be upgraded with the help of China, and uh, you will be uh, happy to come to know that uh, I have recently visited uh, China and uh, I have visited CRCC company of China which yes. is a, a very big, very important, uh, very huge uh, company uh, related to r railway matters. And if that company, Pakistan collaborates with that company for the up upgradation of this project, mm. uh, I mean Pakistan, uh, Pakistan uh, railway will progress uh, uh, day and night. Uh, it will really help uh, uh, in the progress and development of CPEC as well because it will cover the economic zones uh, established along uh, that railway uh, route as well. Mm -hmm. uh, so, China's that vision of connectivity and uh, speed up, uh, brisk speed up uh, of uh, the, the goods from Pakistan 
onward to Europe and East Africa uh, 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 will be you know, initiated through that uh, railway project. All right. Uh, Prime Minister Anwar Kakar, while meeting uh, Xi Jinping, also highlighted that uh, China's progress serves as a role model uh, for Pakistan. This was also highlighted uh, directly or indirectly uh, during uh, his address uh, to uh, the this BRI forum. We'll be uh, highlighting that in uh, this very segment, but we have to take a short break. Stay tuned. Welcome back. You're watching Newsroom. I'm Mark Khalid Bhatt and we are discussing the meeting between uh, Xi Jinping, the Chinese president, and our caretaker Prime Minister Anwar ul Kaka that took place today. Important issues of mutual interest were discussed. We are also highlighting uh, Xi Jinping's address to the Belt and Road Forum that happened in which he highlighted uh, eight major steps for cooperation in uh, under the BRI. We've been joined by San Jasmin, uh, who is a reporter for uh, CGTN in China. China. Thank you very much to have joined us. A pleasure to have you here. I'd like to understand the eight points for uh, the cooperation in Belt and Road uh, uh, that were announced by President Xi Jinping that include building a multidimensional Belt and Road network, supporting and opening world economy, carrying practical cooperation, promoting green development, advancing scientific and technological innovation, supporting people to people exchange, promoting integrity based Belt and Road cooperation, and strengthening institutional building. How important are these eight steps that have been highlighted? So, um, the, in the past decade, you know, cooperation has been going on uh, between many countries, including China with Pakistan. We know that um, as uh, the meeting with President Xi and also uh, Kakar uh, is uh, talking about the China and Pakistan economic corridor is one of the signature program. So I, I think um, a lot of things has been happening and will continue. Um, previously, I was talking about, so the past decade was the first phase of the cooperation between China and Pakistan. And now um, with the understanding of the eight initiative, we're mo moving into second phase. The eight uh, and the A action that you're talking about is actually an expansion of uh, what we already been working on, um, the, the, what China has been working on. Um, you know, cooperation has already established. So what's the next phase? I think to understand what's the next phase, uh, if we look back to the aid action, it means a push toward high quality, the high quality, including areas you just mentioned, including infrastructure, uh, including cooperation in sustainable uh, green development, and also their cooperation on people to people exchanges. Some of the examples I, or, I can already share with you is, for example, um, under the business of Chinese Premier Li Chang, there was signing of cooperation between uh, China and Pakistan, including, for example, I know there is aerospace cooperation, there were mad call exchanges. So a lot of things are happening. Um, even with the A actions that we're pushing forward is to aim uh, building more a high quality Burma initiative. All right, Jasmine, you know, our Prime Minister also not only met with Xi Jinping, he also met with the Chinese Premier uh, yesterday, Li Chiang. He also met with other important leaders uh, uh, in China. He also met with industry giants from construction, steel, minerals, food, copper, and other sectors. Uh, how important is investment uh, between Pakistan and China and how important do you see is the reaction coming from the Chinese companies as far as investing in Pakistan and working in Pakistan and you know uh, strengthening Pakistan's economy and cooperating with Pakistan in the economic sector is concerned. So um, to put it in the fir first way, I would answer this question as it was very well uh, received when um, the Prime Minister of Pakistan actually arrived in China. Everyone was saying um, our old friends are coming again, and it's a very welcoming tone. In addition to that, as you just mentioned, there are so many meetings happening among um, high officials, including the meeting with Chinese Premier Li Chang, as well as with Chinese President Xi Jinping. So um, there are actually different conversations uh, going on. 
um, the meeting with Chinese President Xi Jinping focusing on the bigger picture. Um, as uh, Chinese President Xi, Xi said, both countries cherish the cooperation. And Kakari responded that Pakistan really valued China's friendship as well as China's cooperation with Pakistan, including the efforts already made in the economic corridor, as well as some of the major infrastructure projects, including highways. And also there are people to people exchanges uh, develop and also that will continue to push forward. In addition to that, the meeting with Li Chang is uh, more focusing on um, signing deals. So under the witness of uh, Chinese Premier Li Chang, it's more focusing on signing the deals with China International Development and a cooperation agency that's focusing on cooperation among aerospace and also medical and some other aspect I just talked about. So um, these are the different phase and different meanings and uh, what, what are the uh, dialogues are about. So we're, we're seeing a lot more cooperation are happening. Um, as I just mentioned, the first phase of short term goal it's, has been accomplished. So both countries are looking forward to also working with other countries, moving on to second phase, which is more medium term, including projects on infrastructure, roads, and also the Qatar International Airport is one of the key projects, um, for example, in, under the theme of connectivity, because uh, you just mentioned um, that in Chinese President Xi Jinping's speech, we are working to establish a multi-dimensional network, including um, the transportation for logistics, including air, sea, and land. So to really have those goals to be accomplished in the future, this is what the officials are talking about and have been working on. All right, Jasmine, final question. Uh, during the conversation between Xi Jinping and President, uh, Prime Minister Anwar Kakar, one thing that President Xi Jinping highlighted was peace, stability and uh, prosperity among the priorities of China under the BRI. BRI is more than 100 countries, Jasmine. You know, the fact remains that when you talk of peace, stability and prosperity and when you look at the geoeconomic or geostrategic context of the world and how it is rapidly changing. How important are these three words that are uttered by uh, the Chinese president? Um, I think I want to quote what President um, Indonesian President uh, Joko Widodo said at the connectivity forum. He said that in the global era now, uh, connectivity is the path to prosperity. So what we're also at the uh, connectivity forum uh, Prime Minister of Pakistan, uh, Kakar, also said that um, with connectivity, we're not only talking about infrastructure, but we're also talking about people to people exchange. We're talking about transportation. We're talking about uh, sustainable development. So all these aspects are linked together to reach the goal of prosperity. And also, I want to echo that I was able to talk to um, a high representative from UNAOC, the Alliance of Civilization, and he was talking about that without human being the infrastructure the trade and also all the exchanges on politics are secondary so what we are focusing on is actually in the project itself are improving people's livelihood and also expand the job opportunity for countries that are participating thank you so very much and jasmine to have joined us all the way from china that was jasmine she was joining us from cgtn in China to highlight not only Pakistan-China relationship, but also this third Belt and Road Forum and the meeting that was held between the Chinese President Xi Jinping and our uh, caretaker Prime Minister Anwar al -Kagar. Thank you very much to have joined us. Uh, let's come uh, finally to the studios. Uh, you know, uh, a lot of things when it comes to the Chinese model are very important for countries such as Pakistan. One is poverty alleviation. The way Ch uh, China has moved and changed the whole scenario for its people is astounding to say the least. How can Pakistan, uh, you know, uh, emulate the same model? Uh, Pakistan need to follow that model which China has opted and has made tremendous pr progress in the uh, uh, in very short span of time. Hmm. Pakistan also can uh, gain that momentum and uh, bring uh, Pakistan out of that marshes of uh, poverty and you know depression or uh, 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 th th that uh, disastrous uh, uh, atmosphere. Uh, China has uh, first of all addressed poverty, uh, has brought uh, more than 80 b m uh, million uh, uh, Chinese, uh, um, uh, 280 million Chinese uh, out of that uh, mm. uh, poverty level and uh, have engaged them in agriculture and industrial development have given them loans, uh, interest-free loans, and have provided them that uh, expertise of agriculture 
and uh, uh, industrial uh, development. Uh, agriculture is based is now transferred uh, or uh, transformed to uh, uh, technology. Hmm. Uh, of, uh, first, they have been having uh, focus on uh, uh, manual way or uh, the orthodox ways of uh, uh, agriculture, but now they are transformed on uh, technology. Same is the way of uh, uh, um, small technologies, hmm. small industries uh, are being set up in different cities uh, for the uh, for addressing the poverty alleviation uh, in different parts of. Uh, uh, China. Same way we can opt and we can also uh, address poverty issue in Pakistan. I think that would be a very good model for Pakistan to emulate. Let's see how that goes along in the coming years. Thank you very much, Naveed Aman Khan, senior analyst to have joined us in the studios as far as Pak China relations, the third Belt and Road Forum, and of course the different meetings that our caretaker prime minister has had with the Chinese leadership, including that with Xi Jinping today. Thank you very much to have joined us. Let's come to our second story that concerns uh, Israel Palestinian uh, conflict. The, uh, 13th day of this conflict as we speak, death toll is 3,478 in Gaza alone. In the West Bank, 69 Palestinians have been killed by Israeli forces. The barbarities continue. The humanitarian aid can't reach the people in Gaza. More in the following report. Israel has intensified its bombing over different parts of Gaza Strip. Israeli warplanes have fired several missiles at four residential towers in the Al Zahra area in central Gaza Strip, destroying them completely. The deadly explosion at a hospital in Gaza has sparked calls from protesters around the world to end the Israeli bombardment of the Palestinians in the besieged territory. Organization of the Islamic Cooperation has called for the immediate cessation of the barbaric aggression of the Israeli Israel against the Palestinian people and the immediate lifting of the siege imposed to the Gaza Strip. Chinese President Xi Jinping urged visiting Egyptian Prime Minister Mustafa Madbouli to open a humanitarian corridor for civilians fleeing to the fighting in Gaza. US President Joe Biden has warned Israel about making mistakes in a rush for so-called justice while on a visit to Tel Aviv. Joe Biden has also unveiled a deal to allow desperately needed humanitarian aid to enter war-torn Gaza. Where one million people have fled their homes amid withering Israeli airstrike. British Prime Minister Rishi Sunak also arrived in Israel. He will share his uh, condolences for the loss of life in Israel and in the Palestinian enclave and warn against further escalation. The Palestinian and Israeli envoys to the United Nations slammed the Security Council for its ability to pass a resolution for a humanitarian pause in the Israel and Hamas war to allow the aid to reach the civilians in Gaza. Experts said that European leaders are visiting Israel not to call for the ceasefire but to show they are on Israel's side. Meta has introduced the temporary measures to limit the potentially unwelcome or unwanted comments on Facebook posts about the Israel and Hamas war. When you look at the latest situation as far as Gaza or Palestine is concerned, it's nothing short of uh, inhumane, it's nothing short of uh, the different barbarities that are going on is nothing short of the violence that is being perpetrated on the people in Gaza. 2.3 to 2.4 million enclosed in an enclave and what they are doing is uh, goes beyond any or every international law but despite that they are flouting all these uh, international human rights laws to do whatever they want and whatever they please. Joe Biden was in Israel as well, in which on the one hand he did uh, highlight the humanitarian issue in Palestine, but he uh, did side with Israel. Uh, Rishi Sonik, the uh, British leader, was also is also in fact currently in Israel and of course he uh, echoes the same sentiments as uh, Joe Biden. Spanish uh, social rights minister has asked the Spanish government to cut ties, to spend ties with Israel because of what uh, she calls the human rights issues uh, that, and of course uh, the inhumane uh, attitude of Israel towards uh, Palestine. If you look at the death toll, it's currently 3,478 in Gaza. In the West Bank, the current death toll is 69 Palestinians, all killed by the Israeli forces. The pounding uh, uh, of uh, Israel on Gaza continues, on in the West Bank also continues. Slowly and steadily, uh, the, the barbarities or the violence is trickling out of Gaza and into other areas of uh, the region. It is also being said that the Israeli army is all ready to uh, launch a ground offensive in Gaza. What kind of repercussions is that ground offensive going to have 
on the people in Gaza, on the already precarious uh, humanitarian situation that has engulfed the people in Gaza. We all know what happened with the bombarding of the hospital in Gaza that uh, resulted in the loss of 500 plus lives. There is a complete disregard for any uh, human right whatsoever or uh, any uh, humane uh, en environment whatsoever as far as the current situation is concerned. The conflict, as you very well know, began on the 7th of October when Palestinian group Hamas initiated Operation Al-Aqsa Flood, a multi-pronged surprise attack. And of course, not only did it take Israel by surprise, but the fact that 1,000 Hamas militants managed to enter Israel was uh, a, uh, left many question marks for a lot of people across the world. As a result, began the pounding, the violent, the barbaric attitude of uh, Israel towards Palestinians. Irrespective of uh, the, their liaison with Hamas, the fact remains that it is the Palestinian people who have borne the brunt of the Israeli violent and barbaric attitude. Dr. Vasim Ishaq, expert in national relations, joins us online. Thank you very much, Dr. Saab, to have joined us. Dr. Saab, the, the reports of a land operation by Israel, what kind of repercussions is this going to have on an already fragile Gaza? Thank you very much. My pleasure to be here. We are indeed witnessing an uh, unprecedented sort of situation in Palestine and especially in Gaza. Unfortunately, the Israel was already in search of some sort of excuse to initiate this operation. And this excuse was then availed on 7th of October. Since then, there's a relentless bombing of Gaza. While we calculate the deaths and injured people today, I think more than 3,500 Palestinian, innocent Palestinian civilians have died, and more than double the amounts which have been injured so far. While on the Israeli side, 1,300 killed and some around 700 to 800 injured. So there's a huge gap between the kind of devastation which we are witnessing in Gaza nowadays. Coming over to the land operation, what is the military strategy and what is the political strategy of Israel? This was the overriding question when I was preparing for this sort of talk show. The Israel's military strategy, as it appears today, is to decapacitate Hamas and throw them out of Gaza. And their political strategy is to create a wedge between Hamas and the Palestinian people and between those residents in Gaza and those residents in West Bank. And also create a sort of opportunity where the Arab leaders' opinion and the Muslim world, by and large, their opinion should be divided. So in that context, the Israel has prepared its ground offensive on Gaza with devastating consequences for the humanitarian catastrophe, which has already been created by the Israeli relentless bombing since last two weeks. I am afraid that this ground offensive Yes, because of the extensive bombing may create some sort of immediate results on ground. The Israel may be able to occupy northern Gaza, which has partly been evacuated for the immediate uh, time frame. However, it would have a very, very long term repercussions. For instance, it would further create resentment against Israel and all those countries I would say the United States, the United Kingdom, and the Europe, which are standing by Israel, absolutely ignoring the human rights violations, the war crimes, and the crimes against humanity, which have been unleashed by Israel since last two weeks. So when the ground operation is launched, it would then further create extremist tendencies inside uh, Palestine, as well as inside Israel. I'm sure there must be moderate elements over there. They would not like that the state of Palestine should be wiped out like this. They would not like... Dr. 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 Vaseem, Vaseem, I'd like to understand your perspective on the different maneuverings that are going on uh, across the world as far as this crisis is concerned. Whether on the one hand we see, first of all, Joe Biden, then Rishi Sonak arriving in Israel to show solidarity with Israel and of course talk openly against Hamas. On the other hand, we have the Jordanian king who is also on his way to Egypt to discuss the, the conflict in Gaza. Xi Jinping, the Chinese president, has said he will work with Egypt to stabilize Middle East. He met with the 
uh, Egyptian uh, you know uh, representative uh, at the third Belt and Road Forum. How important are all these developments that are happening? The OIC special meeting that was held in which our uh, you know uh, foreign minister also attended, Jaliza Bazidani sahab. These developments that are happening, what kind of impact are they going to have? on the future of this conflict and on some kind of ceasefire that could or might happen? I think the uh, great powers are really concerned about the deteriorating situation inside Gaza. We have seen the Russian resolution, which was tabled just two days ago and was then suddenly rejected and it was obvious that it was going to be rejected. However, the Russia as a responsible great power has already given its bid for immediate ceasefire. We have seen President Xi Jinping was also involved in one-on-one -on -one contact with uh, Palestinian Authority and also with uh, the Russian president when he was now visiting Beijing during Belt and Road Forum. He also availed this opportunity and discussed this issue with majority of the world leaders. Now the Russia and China together with all those responsible nation states are on one side to go for an immediate ceasefire to prevent the future catastrophic and further catastrophic and cessation of hostilities. And both the President Xi and President Putin have been emphasizing that the root cause of this entire problem is the lack of US push for the two-state solution, which was promised with the Palestinians 30 years ago. So therefore, now there's an urgency at the level of great powers. They are concerned that the root cause must be addressed as soon as possible. So therefore, in the days to come, at the regional level, means the OIC, the neighboring countries, and we have seen the Arab stance has been almost unanimous on the cessation of hostilities, on the barbaric acts which have been unleashed by Israel, and also towards the two-state solution. So I think the momentum has been generated by this conflict, and the great powers and the regional powers are now very much convinced and we will be seeing more of a shuttle diplomacy and more of a hectic diplomacy, first the cessation of hostilities, and then going towards a long-term solution in terms of the two-state uh, two state Palestinian and Israel living side by side as it was promised in Oslo card. So I'm very optimistic that all such moves and indicators are positive and we would be witnessing a sort of hectic diplomacy in days to come. All right. Thank you so very much, Dr. Vaseem Ishaq, to have joined us, to have talked to us about the latest developments as far as the Palestinian conflict is concerned. Also, the resentment is growing within the countries that are openly supporting Israel. Josh Paul, who has worked on arms transfer for more than 11 years at the Bureau of Political and Military Affairs, has also announced his resignation in a two-page uh, letter addressing his reasoning for stepping down calling uh, this, uh, this uh, what is happening in Israel, in Palestine. And he is uh, say, saying it is not just a monstro monstrosity, but it is a monstrosity of monstrosities. I think the message is very clear as far as even uh, these officials are concerned. Thank you so very much, Dr. Sab, to have joined us. Let's come to our uh, last uh, two stories. The first uh, concerns, uh, of course, uh, the today's day as the uh, this little badge that I'm wearing here, International Day Against Breast Cancer. In uh, uh, Pakistan, we are celebrating the uh, and commemorating the month uh, against uh, of, of uh, cancer awareness. International Day Against Breast Cancer is being observed today as well across the country to raise awareness about breast cancer and, of course, improve women's access to timely diagnosis and treatment. Our president, Dr. Arif Alvi, has also said that Pakistan has one of the highest mortality rates due to breast cancer in Asia, which is alarming and the necessary measures need to be taken so that breast cancer is detected at an early stage so that it can be diagnosed. The importance of any cancer, including breast cancer, is paramount specifically when it comes to cancers that involve women. And so the timely diagnosis and understanding how to uh, know and when to know if you have anything that could lead to a cancer is also very important. Last story concerns scientists uh, across the world who have been surprised by a low magnitude earthquake that has happened of all places in Mars. Uh, NASA's InSight lander detected the large quake recalled it was, uh, that happened on Mars. It was a 4.7 magnitude, fairly modest by Earth standards because we've seen much deadly earthquakes, specifically also in Pakistan in the past as well. Uh, we, uh, they say that uh, this happened because of a meteorite that hit uh, NASA, but they are also going to study 
uh, the NASA's atmosphere and NASA surface in the days to come to ascertain what kind of effects uh, this uh, magnitude earthquake is going to have on NASA surface. Interesting times ahead as far as scientific uh, discoveries are concerned. With that, ladies and gentlemen, we come to an end of today's newsroom. We'll see you inshallah tomorrow with new story segments that pertain to us, you and Pakistan. Allah Hafiz.